You're listening to Our Space with Matt Batiste. We showcase a lot of up-and-coming bands on this show, but rarely do we showcase new artists. And when I say new, I mean brand new. With only three songs out right now as we record this, uh, they already had quite. A, they already have quite an interesting story, and that's why they're on the show. We love stories here. They're a pop punk duo. They go by the name Internet Friends. Please welcome Michael and Rossi. How's it going, guys? Woo. Yeah, good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, like I mentioned, you have quite the story, and I kind of want to start it from the beginning and and hear it straight from you guys, Rossi. Back in like the 2010s, you weren't making music. You were managing artists and running a label. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So I was doing, I've, I mean, when I was uh, in my teenage years, I was in bands and, and was writing songs and that kind of thing. Um, and then around about 16, ended up realizing that I was a lot better on the business side. So uh, for 14 or 15 years, I was managing acts and running uh, a label. I did that for a really long time. And then in 2020, um, just before COVID. So I was, I, sorry, I should explain. I was born in the UK. I now live in Australia. I just moved to Australia and got uh, married to my, my wife out there, which is why I went to Australia. Congratulations. But, thank you very much. Um, but she, uh, she, but I was, <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was living in LA for about 10, 10 years in the middle of that. So to live in, to live and work in LA, I have to have a working visa. And it just so happened that my my visa at the time was up for renewal. And I flew back to the UK at the end of February in 2020 with a oh, small no. suitcase. <laughs> yeah. With a small suitcase thinking, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna land in London, I'm gonna go to the embassy, I do uh I do my passport, and then I'll go see go see some family members for a few days, pick my passport up and fly back home a week later, just one week. The day after I landed in London was when everything shut down. So I got stuck in the UK. I went back into my childhood sort of, well, my teenage bedroom um, at one of my parents' houses. Um, and then, th you know, like everyone else just was there, you know, staring at the ceiling, twiddling my thumbs, thinking this will all blow over soon. Yeah, just two but, weeks. Yeah, right. And then a month <laughs> goes by, two months goes by, and three or four months. And, we're, and I'm like, I'm really going to need something to do. Like there's no, there's no, there's nothing to do. So I found, um, I found my very first guitar um from when i from when i was uh a kid on uh, in the cupboard under the stairs lucky and, that your parents kept that right yeah <laughs> so it was a it's a it was like a, a black and white fender squire and i got it out and the strings were completely you know <laughs> like, as, as you'd imagine a guitar that hasn't had its strings changed in 20 years it was uh it was like that but um I, I I sat on my bed. I ordered some new uh, some new strings on Amazon because Amazon Prime was working still weirdly at the yeah. time in the UK. Um, and then whilst I was waiting for the strings to arrive, I was like, "Well, I'm just going to write a song because I you know I haven't written a song in 16 years. Like I'm just going to do it to amuse myself." And I wrote the first song, and I was like, "Oh, well, that made the afternoon go faster." I woke up the next day, I wrote another one, and I was like, "That's not bad." And then, you know, a week goes by and I'm like, oh, this is happening now. And then so, something just happened and just all these songs started coming out of me. And um, I think I kind of made a decision there that I was going to slowly move away from the business side of music, which is what I was doing for, you know, the 15 years or so running up to that point. And I just got the fire back for songwriting and, and, and the fire back for wanting to be in a band. Um, <clears throat> so... Yeah, so by the by the end of 2020, I was sat on like 30 or 40 songs or something like that. I was going to ask how many songs did you write in that period cuz nothing well, much else to do. Yeah, in 2020 <laughs> I got up to like somewhere in the mid 40s, but I think now we're somewhere around 100. Like yeah. we've just it's <laughs> up there. <laughs> it's up there. It's up yeah. there. <laughs> and um I knew I knew the type of front person I wanted for the band. Um so I was patient, I was willing to wait. So whilst I continued to write songs, I was just scrolling TikTok every day, just typing in the search bar and, the ha and, and using hashtags like, you know, uh, pop vocalist, punk vocalist, vocals, you know. Um, and then during that time, I managed to get back to Australia. 
Um, and I remember it was about 18 months later. So where does that put us? Uh, maybe the end of 2022, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and I'm scrolling TikTok. I'm in my house in Australia with my wife. And then Michael just just pops up on my screen. And I just grabbed, I just grabbed my wife like, <laughs> this is, I think this is the guy. I think this is the guy. So I waited kind of like a week, uh, you know, just to kind of see how it felt. And then I was just like, I still feel good about this. I'm just going to take a chance. I'm going to message him. And then, you know, Michael graciously messaged me back on, um, uh, it was actually on Instagram. I messaged him. I found his Instagram. He, he messaged me back. And not long after that, we, we were on Zoom and I was showing him some of the songs I wrote. A week after that, we clicked like this on Zoom. And then a week after that, I was in Austin staying at his, his place with his, his, uh, his girlfriend and the cats. And we just had this magic week where I, uh, you can see some footage of this on our, on our YouTube channel, on our vlogs, but you know, we're just sat in his spare bedroom with my laptop and, and just a, a sure SM seven mic, just recording demos. Which and is crazy was, because at this point you're still basically strangers. Like you had a couple yeah, of zoom no, calls yeah, and like, you're like moved across the world, not country, <laughs> you know, and now you're in this stranger's bedroom after talking to them for a week and messaging yeah. them on the internet. So internet right. friends is a perfect name for this band, considering exactly. you literally met someone on the internet a week later, moved around the world to sit in their bedroom and record songs. Like that whole idea is insane it to really a, like is. the average person. It yeah. really is. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah. Looking back on it, it really was. It's like especially when you during it, like the COVID yeah. era, right? Like this was also like during. I know by 2022, things had definitely started to calm down by that point. But like yeah. through the yeah. COVID era, like yeah, I'm just gonna go around the world and and hang out with this person I met online, right? <laughs> yeah, and also, like we we recorded a song the I, uh, the first day. Yeah, it oh, was, yeah. It was like you picked me up from the airport, and I was like, right, let's get into it. Yeah, and you were just like, let's yeah, go, just go. So yeah, so we, so that week was completely magic. I think we both felt it <clears throat> that we had there was something to it. Um, and then I flew back to Australia, and we had a bunch of demos. And we were like, "Well, what's next? Like, I guess what's next?" So the, where are we now? We're at the end of kind of mid January twenty three is where we are. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the next thing was, well, if we're going to start recording some music properly, we need to find a producer. So this is where the story gets kind of fun for me. Um, <laughs> we, 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 we emailed like two or three or three or four, something like that, different producers that we thought were one within our reach as a new band or duo, whatever you want to call it. And two that were affordable. Um, and none of them got back to us. So two or three months go by and then now I'm getting frustrated and I'm like, but I, I know these songs are good. Like what's going wrong? And then I and you found, have a background in the industry and the business right. side of it, right? So you probably have a few access to a few emails and know how the kind of, I guess it all works. But even then you still struggled to get in touch with a producer for a couple of months. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, yeah. is that a normal thing? I don't, well, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's a normal thing or not. I think I don't, I don't really know. I don't really know what it was looking back on it. I mean, I, I, I like to believe in, uh, I like to believe that this part of the story is just a bit of fake. I like to believe that the reason, you know, the first few producers that didn't email us back is because the producer that did email us back was the one we were supposed to work with. You know, I, you know, I just like to believe that because it makes things it work out for a reason. I like that <laughs> belief too. And I, and I have that belief, right? Like if yeah. one thing didn't work out, it's because there's a better opportunity around the corner. And I already know where the story is going. Cause I know yeah. the producer you worked with, but I want to hear it from you. I want my listeners to hear it from you as well. I'm really excited for, to, you know, go through this and, and hear it straight from you. And I want to ask you a few questions about, you know, working with him and all of that. So it's really exciting. I'll let you continue on yeah. that end. I just kind of wanted to know, like, how normal was it for, like, uh, another up-and-coming band reaching out to producers getting tired? Like, you know, a couple of months go by, you don't hear from anybody. Like, what do you do in that situation? How did it all work out for you? Yeah, I mean, th those two or three months actually were quite frustrating because I'm a, like... The only way I know how to do things and the only way I've ever done things is just to knock on every single door until one opens. That's just how I've always done. Mm -hmm. That's just how I've always lived. So, and I'm also very, very impatient. So you put those two <laughs> things together. Um, 
it's yeah, it was, it was it was tough, man. But I kept going, and then so there's a guy called Matt Squire, who a lot of people who listen to this podcast will know, and maybe some people won't know. So I'll explain who he is. I found he's a he's a producer. I found his email on the internet. I can't remember where. I think it was even on maybe like a Reddit thread or something. And I, out of frustration, one night it was about nine p.m. at night or something like that. Out of frustration. I emailed him the demos and was just, you know, hey, looking for a producer. If you like the songs, hit us back. We'd love to work with you. And it was such a it was such a long shot that I didn't even tell Michael that I emailed him. But Michael, <laughs> but Michael saw the email go out of our joint inbox and then texted me being like, <laughs> Matt's quiet. Nice one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. I was like, that's cool. Right? <laughs> yeah. right? Hey, shooting a shot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so just for the listeners, Matt Squire, um, he's done loads of loads of great uh, records, but most notably, he did the first two All Time Low albums. He did the first Panic at the Disco album. He did the Big Boys Like Girls album. Um, he did All Distortions Are Intentional by Neck Deep. He's great. One of my favorite producers ever in this in this genre. And so I go to bed. And for some reason, I usually put my phone on do not disturb. And for some reason this night, I just forgot to do it. And I remember my wife was already asleep and I was just about there. And I heard my phone go. Bzz, bzz, and I was like, Fuck. who's messaging uh, me at this hour? Yeah, who's messaging? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I shouldn't check it. I shouldn't check it, but I'm going to check it. So I checked it and Matt got back to us within two hours and was just like, love the songs. Let's work. Let's, let me know when you can jump on Zoom. And I flicked the light on and I rolled over and asked to my wife and I was like, Matt, you went back. Matt, you went back. She's like, what? what? Who's Matt? <laughs> <laughs> who, who are you talking about? I was Why like, are you waking me up? Matt Squire, the padding of the disco guy, he went back. <laughs> and, um, and then it all just went from there. Like you could, you can kind of uh, see the rest of the story on our, on our, uh, we do these little vlogs which are on our YouTube. But yeah, we had a great time with Matt and uh, that's kind of the story. That's amazing. And and Mike, what were you doing before uh, Rossi reached out to you? Because he mentioned that, you know, you were he was scrolling TikTok and he found you as a singer scrolling TikTok. Were you singing for other bands? Were you writing your own solo music? Like, what was the deal there? Yeah, so I was and I still am, actually. I'm in another band called Fox Sarah. Um, And so I like around, I guess it was 2021, 2022, maybe like late 2021. I decided because I saw so many people on TikTok, I was like, man, I need to figure this out because, you know, so many people are going viral, so many bands are blowing up, and like, it's like the new era of promotion, you know. So I kind of was, just, I just decided, like, yeah, I'm gonna figure this out. I started watching a bunch of videos and trying to figure out content and all that stuff. And yeah, by by about the time that Ross found me on there, I had like kind of figured out a formula for myself, and I was like having some like good success on videos and just posting a bunch of singing videos. Um, so yeah, that was really like when he found me, it was like when I was like kind of figuring out the TikTok side of things and like social media and yeah, just kind of putting myself out there and learning how to promote my other band basically through the platform. So mm. yeah, that's kind of where I was. So you just wanted other people to check out your other songs and then he found you and then boom, one thing led to another. He's traveling across the world to hang out in your bedroom after a week. That's literally 100%. Yeah, that, is, that is it. That's it. It's so funny having you put like that from other people. Because when, when we say it, we're just like, yeah, that's what happened. That's so cool. But when other totally people, normal. We're like, whoa. Yeah, we're like, whoa. Like, what if one of us was a serial killer? Like, is like, yeah. yeah that's, that's a, I, I don't think that that's, that's something I would be weary of. But like, yeah. I mean, but you hear that that's the cool thing about a lot of artists and a lot of musicians is like, you kind of hear stories similar to this. It's like, oh, I just connected with this random person across the world and I moved across the world to go and make music with them and it worked out. Um, I guess we won't hear from the people it didn't work out for because they're probably like, you know, stored right. in a basement somewhere. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. Those are the ones that didn't make it. Listen, yeah, yeah. You have to gotta risk it all for the art. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and we're just out here living it. All in, all in, baby. I love that. And I love that it was, uh, you know, you guys were just able to, to connect. Uh, and 
the pandemic had such a huge part of it too, which is crazy that it kind of happened at the time that it did. Like right. essentially the pandemic is also partly responsible for the two of you coming together, right? Without the pandemic, oh, yeah. you would have just gone back to LA, done your business thing and not got, didn't get stuck uh, in your parents' basement writing, <laughs> writing songs, right? Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I like, you know, it was a, it was a, a really hard time for everyone, but I, in moments like that, like I, I think it's really healthy to try and draw some kind of positive from it. And that's, that's how I choose to look back on that time. Like, you know, we, we all went through struggles. I went, it was a horrible time for me, but this came out of it, you know, it's amazing. Yeah. Really. It's cool. It kind of sounds like it was the pandemic. It was TikTok, And there was one <laughs> other thing that brought you guys together from uh, another video that I've seen that I wanted to ask you about. Oh yeah. How did MGK help internet friends become a thing? How did he? Yeah. Cause yeah. MG, the MGK record. Oh, <laughs> oh, it clicked. It clicked. Oh. It clicked. Matt, I was trying to be nice. Now I'm gonna be. Now I'm gonna be mean. You can I, be mean. It's okay. This is an open platform for you to be nice or mean. Okay, it's all right. Now. All right, all right. Seatbelts on, guys. So the part I leave out about this story because I want to be, I want you know, I want to be nice, is that. Before I was writing the songs, so c come back to 2020. Um, I mean, I've got my my childhood guitar. I'm writing songs again for the first time. The reason I started writing songs was because the initial thought I had was, I haven't like I I'd like like all of us. I, I I imagine I was also the kid in the baggy jeans with the wallet chain and the limp biscuit t-shirt. And that's the music I grew up on, right? I'm like I'm a diehard Newfound Glory fan. I love them so much, you know. And I was like, I haven't really been listening to this kind of music for a long time. So this is probably a good opportunity to go on some pop punk playlists and see what's going on. And I was so disappointed. It was all crap. Like, <laughs> like well, not all of it. Not all of it. I can't say all of it. Like, I th like Neck Deep changed everything for me like mm -hmm. they are an amazing band i love a lot of what of uh, a lot of the stuff that state champs do and also even though at the time i didn't know he was such a polarizing figure or whatever in pop punk that first mgk album that he did with travis barker oh man that was that was another game changer when i heard that like so it was a mix of oh uh, well if no one if no one's going to be writing great pop punk then i'm going to do it mm -hmm. and then i heard the mgk album and i was like this is a Billboard number one album, and this is pop punk. And I was right. A few months later, it went number one. And I, that and that album, along with All Distortions Are Intentional by Neck Deep, which came out like within a few months, that Matt Squire produced. The combination of those two albums coming out was like, ah, uh, like I've got to write a song as good as this. I've got to write a song as good as Track Ten, Track Seven. That's the real reason. I love that because. You won't hear many people actually give MGK and tickets to my downfall flowers because of, oh, I guess, who he I, is I, or <laughs> or what it is. And like, I mean, I'll be real with you. When that album came out, I think for a lot of us, we all listened to it and went, oh, this is actually a good album. And we all liked it. And like, realistically, all I really kind of knew about MGK, like I saw a video back on like the early YouTube days of him covering a rise against song. I think then didn't know or think of him for years after that, that he gets into his beef with Eminem. And I'm like <laughs> listening to those two to, uh, go back and forth. And I'm like, Oh, MGK kind of sucks. Uh, and, then, and then MGK comes out with his pop punk record. And I'm like, Oh, maybe this was actually his lane because you know, these songs, yeah, they reminded me of like old school blink 182 songs now you find out afterwards it's like oh he's working with travis barker this makes sense these are good songs um i don't know how well it's aged since then because i haven't listened to it in years now but when it came out i think mm. for a lot of us it like got us back into some of the older pop punk stuff and uh it it did kind of spark the scene a little bit. So you kind of got to give him his flowers, but also with a grain of salt because MGK is also a polarizing figure and he's done a bunch of things in his personal life. I don't agree with and all of that, but that album does get, it's like Rose. 
Yeah. We'll call it flowers. We'll call it its yeah. rose. <laughs> well, I, I was, I would, I would go one step further and and say I would give him full flowers. And <laughs> but you have to understand the, the the position I'm coming from. I'm the perspective I'm coming from when I'm looking at that album in particular is from a songwriter's perspective. Mm-hmm. And when I listen to a piece of music, the first thing I I I want to know about is are the songs good enough? Mm-hmm. That's that's the first line of defense. And on that album, the, the songs are good enough. And the reason they're good enough is because MGK is not the only person involved. Yeah, one of the one of the members of Blink also wrote those songs, and I believe Mod Sun also helped write a lot of it. And we all know Mod Sun's history with Scary Kids, Scary Kids, and everything as well. Like he he was an, and still is an old kid. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like that's the first line of defense. So. The songs are great. Whether you like him as a person or not, that's up for debate. But the songs are amazing. And the follow-up so- album, not so much. But that album was <laughs> – because he tried to follow it up with another <laughs> pop-punk album. Wasn't very good. That fell in love with an emo girl. I want to smash my head against the wall when yeah, that one yeah, comes that's, on. That's, um, yeah. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but one. you know that album in particular 100 percent, i believe deserves yeah. its flowers mike were you into uh mgk when that came out or were you one of the cool kids that always hated him <laughs> <laughs> i i haven't listened to the record unless he's played it but oh, okay <laughs> i I've, I've never listened to really anything that mgk this has is, put out right. i, I want to go one step over here right yeah this is <laughs> This, this is an exclusive for you, Matt. This is a weird thing about Michael that I've learned over the last 18 months. Michael doesn't listen to music at all. <laughs> at at all. all. What was the last album you listened to? I don't know. I think <laughs> I think maybe... As maybe, a musician, listening to music is like work or something. Yeah, I think maybe the last thing that I listened to was like the new... Not even the full record, but the Tori Kelly EP that came out that we listened to. Over that was, here, that was six months. That was like ago. six months ago. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm so I'm the guy that like I'll like find a song that I like and I'll play it for like three months and I'll be like like over and over again. I'm like really weird like that. Drives and me crazy. Out, My fiance is like that. She yeah, she finds weird. out one song she likes and it's just over and over and over and over again yeah. for like six months. I just yeah. I always make the joke that I'm like I just like don't like music that much. <laughs> yeah. But it's not true. I love music. Like I love making music i love writing music i love singing like it's a huge part of my life that's true and uh so like there there are some things that like really inspire me but i do go back to albums a lot but it's like albums from like years ago like it's right. it's really goofy when people are like hey like listen to this you should listen to this new band have you heard this i'm like no i'll listen to it for sure though and no, I'm not, <laughs> no. i don't listen to it <laughs> and yeah, yeah i just like completely forget about it yeah i'm just uh i'm an oddball <laughs> that is yeah. hilarious. Do you listen to your own music when you're like in the car or something? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a big difference between me and Michael, right? So like we I think you said to me we did we had that week at your place where we did those demos, right? Yeah. And there was maybe a, f- a four, four or five month gap between be- leaving your apartment and being in Matt Squire's studio. Yeah. I listened to those demos every single day on the way to the gym, on the way back from the gym, sometime in the afternoon, and before I went to bed. You hadn't heard the demos again until we got to Matt's studio. And you were like, yeah, so what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, I think I listened to the demos. Like, when I, when I dropped him off at the airport after we recorded them, I listened to him on the way back. And then I maybe li- listened to him, like, one or two times in between, in, like, the five <laughs> like, months. Yeah, it sounds good. Four months. So, yeah, and then I was like, oh, yeah, I should probably, like, learn these songs again. <laughs> I should probably figure this yeah. out. You know? but, it's, but yeah, but it, it's good to know it's it's good to know that you're like that with all music. You like you yeah, are, you're you're that weird. It, I will say like <laughs> if if I am gonna listen to stuff like it's like I do go back to our songs. I just don't go back as much as Ross does. He goes back a lot. He goes back yeah, a lot like I, the demos. I'm, I'm a little bit excessive. He'll he'll listen to the demos like every day. You know, like I'll wake up and be like, oh, like, he's taking a shower. Oh, it's our song. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's not personal. He does it with everybody. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're exactly, exactly. We're very different. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Disclaimer. I love music. I promise. I promise I like it. <laughs> Canceled. He hates yeah, music. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> like this guy. What is he doing? <laughs> so you guys are actually also doing a lot on YouTube. And I mean, you've been doing a lot on YouTube from the beginning, from, you know, even documenting when you first met and all of that. Like, what gave you the idea to do that? And how has that process uh, added to your music? 
Um, great question. I've never thought about that, but I do have an answer for it. I think the other thing that happened during the pandemic was that I watched a lot of music documentaries. And the one thing I noticed about the big ones, like the Metallicas, the Oasis, the Coldplay, like they must have known, or it might have been an accident, but I think they must have known very early on that they were onto something because they all have footage from the very, very beginning. It mm. wasn't like they started recording what they were doing on camera, like third tour in. And they were like, oh, we should probably get some of this down. And I just, I just had the thought of like, well, I feel like that about internet friends. So on the off chance that this band gets huge in, you know, 15 years and we want to drop, drop a documentary, how amazing would it be to have footage from when we first met? So that's, that's the reason really. Um, it sounds like actually, you're also kind of manifesting that, which, which I love. Yeah, I mean, we could, yeah, we could totally get into that, but yeah, ex yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And every, everything with our branding is, is kind of nineties themed. So a lot of what we do is, is filmed on, you know, handy cams and old point and shoot cameras and, I just like that look. So, yeah. You guys have a really good eye for that. Do you have, um, you know, like the quality is all incredible. Is Do you have a background in filming uh, content and stuff or editing or doing any of that? Or is it just kind of like picking it up and learning it as you go? Yeah, it's basically that. I mean, like, yeah, as far as like editing and things like that, like I really picked it up when I started doing like TikTok stuff. I kind of like just figured it out. I figured out CapCut. Um, I actually, funny enough, edit podcasts for work. <laughs> so, oh, nice. Yeah. So I, uh, so I have like experience in final cut too. And that kind of came from that. So just like, you know, kind of trial and error and like figuring all that out. Like you're that, I feel like you're that type of person though. Like, you're, yeah, you're kind of like a Justin Bieber in the sense that like, if you wanted to skateboard, like you'd, you'd be a really good skater in a year. Like if you wanted to play basketball, you'd yeah. be a, a decent basketball player. Do you know what I mean? You yeah. pick stuff up really well. I, I get really attached to things. So like I got like, you know, really into, you know, just, out, just, just not music. Just not music. <laughs> just weird things, you know? <laughs> it helps us out. So that's cool. But yeah, I, uh, yeah. Like, like for example, like for our content, like a lot of stuff that we were putting out earlier on and even like some stuff now, we have these like moving like animal skin backgrounds that like behind us that like, you know, for TikTok and all that stuff. and he had sent me those. And then one day I was like, well, what if we like use the green screen and like, kind of like, you know, mm -hmm. put these into our performance videos and that would maybe like set us apart. And we like started liking the look of that and started like, you know, drilling that in and like made the animal skins like a big part of our brand. Mm. Um, and then also the VHS thing, like whenever Ross came to my house the first time, like he literally like found an old like Sony skate cam and like, oh yeah, he, oh, he, yeah. he like ebayed it to my like he sent it to my house. Oh my god, no, so, that was that was I remember. Yeah. Sorry, you just you just brought back a memory. That was yeah. what happened. So it was, yeah, it was it was it was it was almost like a like a same day like delivery type thing where I was yeah. like, oh, I'm feeling the magic. Like I need a camera now. Found a camera and it was delivered. That was what happened. Yeah, there's actually like footage. I think it's on our first vlog of him like the first time he hits record. I'm like walking in the room. I'm like, oh my god, this looks like a home video. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we have, so we have all these like cool, like old things, and that was another thing with our content too that we kind of wanted to implement was like the VHS filters, the VHS text, and like all this stuff to kind of like tie it all together. So it immediately yeah. gives you a dopamine rush of like nostalgia because if oh, you yeah, grew up in like the, the '90s and 2000s, you see that. But like it's. And it gives you that vibe, but also it's still good modern quality because some old VHS quality is just so bad that like I can't even watch it. Yeah, but it, <laughs> it's but really you, funny. You have like, that cool vibe with it. Yeah, we when we opened the box, it smelled like someone's like pool. <laughs> <laughs> like, There's chlorine that, in it before. Old, that old like chlorine like garage feel. Yeah. It literally had that like I remember that from my childhood. Yeah. Like, straight up, I was like, oh it was my God, sitting in a box box. since the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it might have been one of those things where he's like, I, it still works. You yeah. want it? Like, haven't opened it in like 20 years or yeah. whatever. Like, yeah, crazy. Mm. That is crazy. Uh, and it. talking about all that as well, um, you have a line in one of your songs that says, uh, you've confessed, but you're still miserable at best. Is that a coincidence or is that a Mayday Parade shout out? 
<laughs> I was wondering that too, <laughs> Ross. That, that that was funny. That that one that one line in particular is made a great shout out. Nice nice catch. Yeah. yeah. Are there any other sort of uh, nostalgia shout outs in your upcoming EP? Uh, not in the upcoming EP. I do. There's a couple songs. So I like. I really like puzzles. So when <laughs> this is going to sound arrogant but <laughs> like towards the end of 2020 where i was like in such a flow i was like writing a song in like an hour i was like this is getting boring like this is too easy like <laughs> i need to set myself a challenge so i do there's a like there's a song i wrote um for example that has like as many newfound glory um like song titles in it yeah so you don't is that on the ep or is that a future song that's a that's a future song. It's okay. in the bank, but yeah. So I I like to do stuff like that um, for the reason you just picked it up. You know, I, I love I love, you're the I first love when musicians do it. I'm the first person. You're the first person to ever mention that. Yeah, love super that. cool. You got it. I'm super surprised cool. because that was where my brain went immediately. Like I right. saw that, and I'm like, oh, it kind of sounds like a low key like Mayday Mayday Parade shout out. Like, but yeah, you did it in a way that wasn't cheesy or very obvious. Like it just right. kind of like hit but like when i hear the words miserable at best my brain immediately goes to mayday parade but right. i like when bands will like throw in little shout outs that are still within their own song and like it kind of works and you're like oh was that a piece of the puzzle or was that a total coincidence so it's cool yeah. that you did that yeah yeah dude i think a lot like these bands like everyone we listen to like simple plan Sun 41 the offspring mayday parade blink green day like they all left like us a huge legacy mm -hmm. like i said this in a conversation the other day uh which kind of speaks a little bit to what i was saying about when i was checking out new pop punk and i was really disappointed i feel like all these massive bands like they've done their part and they left they they put the baton down and they were like now it's time for the new bands who's going to pick up the baton and that's what i was disappointed about it's like they we got left such a big legacy but there are very few bands that picked up the baton and was like but like we're gonna do this do you know what i mean so, it definitely like, slowed down like we had like the blinks and the sum 41s and then i mean the next generation was kind of like the story so far as the neck deeps the right. knuckle pucks state mm -hmm. champs and all of that but by that point i don't know things started to slow down a little bit and then from there and between there and now yeah through the scene of pop punk and emo really just sort of really died down and there wasn't many people going out to shows and weren't many bands that were able to have the same success that the past bands have and mm -hmm. now we're sort of seeing that revival which is fantastic because i love that this is the music that we grew up listening to so it's really really cool to um mm -hmm. to do that and actually a, a big part of my show here is to show love to a lot of the bands that are keeping the scene alive and doing that. And so I ask every single band uh, and, and artist that comes on the show, uh, if you have any other favorite up and coming bands right now that you want to give a shout out so we can kind of continue keeping the scene alive. I see Rossi looking over at Mike, like he's <laughs> not going to have anything. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, What's the one song you've been having on repeat for the last three months, yeah, Mike? Yeah, yeah. Mike was like, uh, have you ever heard of Drake? <laughs> <laughs> have you heard of him? Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm from Toronto. I, who's that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure you've got one or two. Yeah, I do. Um, I always, I give this band a shout all the time, but it's actually like, so I, I came up in metalcore. Um, and like the heavier side of stuff. Um, and there's a band that I think is really exciting. It's a bunch of friends of mine that are like doing the whole like groove metal thing. Uh, it's a band called Mortal Reminder. Mm. They just like announced their debut album on I think May 17th. It's coming out. Uh, yeah, I think they're doing a crazy job. The visuals are insane. It's a... Uh, there's a lot of League of Legends references. I'm a big League of Legends fan. Like I, play, I play video games with those guys all the time. Um, but they like, it's kind of really, yeah. It, it kind of, it kind of like goes back to like the the like volumes like esque like via days. Like, yeah, it's just super groovy and like fun. To, and the visuals are insane. So for me, I love those guys. I love that band. They are a good band. They're really exciting. So yeah, it's Mortal Reminder for me. I love them. Yeah, that that's fun. I love that. And I'm definitely going to be recommending them to a bunch of people I know that also play League, but I'm more of a Valorant guy myself. I love Valorant, too. <laughs> I like Valorant, too. 
<laughs> Shall I just leave you guys to yeah. like, talk, <laughs> talk about, about Riot <laughs> Games? <laughs> uh, uh, Rossi, what bands are you listening to right now? Um, n- well, n- new bands that I can recommend to people. Um, if if they don't already know them, I'm sh- they they should already know them. Um, Australia, I feel like is having a really great moment with pop punk. Like Stan Atlantic have been doing it for a long time. Um, I love those guys. Um, yours truly a great, um, they actually just put a new song out like two days ago, I think called sour, really great chorus. Yours truly a great, um, between you and me are really good. Um, there's another band from the UK that I, I think they're from Scotland. They're called happy days. I find myself listening to them every so often. They got a tune called, uh, free radical, which is a banger. Um, I think that's all I can think of right now is like new bands. But yeah, I mean, absolutely. It, I mean, really, out of those, out of those, Happy Days is the only new band, but they're they're great. I love those guys. Should I say up and coming? I really like uh, Between You and Me right about now. They came on mm. the show, so if you're oh, listening, uh, go and oh. listen to uh, Bassie's episode. I had Bassie there, and when they came through Toronto, I went by and did a little interview with them on on Instagram, which was a ton of fun. Like they were, oh, yeah. I gave them some Canadian uh, snacks to try, and I got I gave them ketchup chips, and they were just like, "This is absolutely oh. rancid." They hated the ketchup <laughs> chips. It was so funny. What? Uh, <laughs> and they're recently independent and they just dropped an amazing ep themselves so if you haven't listened to that their first song uh has knuckle puck on it too great song uh, and you guys have a new ep coming out june 26 which i'm super excited to hear the full thing is there anything else that you have going on this year that uh you want to promote besides just the new ep any tour dates any other uh releases anything else going on yeah, um, we actually literally just finished EP number two like a couple days ago. <laughs> so we're like good on music for a while. We Our plan at the moment is really just to build a community, yeah. you know, our friends. Yeah. Hey, our internet yeah. friends. The friend zone. The friend Shout zone, out baby. Discord. Shout out Discord. Um, yeah, so our, our whole goal is just building the band, putting out as much music as possible. We're like on track to be putting out a song a month up until like early next year amazing so we're like yeah we're just gonna continue pushing content and at the moment we are filming music videos for the second ep mm-hmm. so we're gonna be doing that for the next until like the until like may 9th he goes back on may 9th so yeah we're doing like two videos a day yeah we yeah yeah Busy. we've already done like what we started thursday and we've like we've- finished like two and a half three yeah something like that so we are working yeah for sure Love to hear that. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a blast getting your story, chatting MGK, chatting music, all of it. I've had yeah. so much fun. I really appreciate you taking the time to come on. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. And I cannot wait to hear that EP, the full EP on June 26th. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, we had a blast, man. Thank yeah, you. This was fun. <laughs> thank you for listening to Our Space with Matt Batiste. If you enjoyed yourself, please support the show by subscribing and leaving a review.